Are you going to find What'd out? What did you say? 22? Well, I said that. Deuce, like, deuce. Like 22. Deuce, Trey, deuce. Trey, Trey, Trey Deuce. Trey Deuce. Trey Deuce. Trey, how, oh, Trey Deuce. You do it this way or you I do, do it this Trey, way? Trey, Trey. Trey, Trey. Trey, Trey. Hated it. Hated it. Trey, Trey. It's a lot of dead air right there. Waiting for Randall to figure out what episode this is. Jamie. Jamie, put it up on the monitor. Let's see what we got. What episode are we on? Jamie? Does Brandle even know why we call him Jamie? Jamie? Put it on the monitor. Let's see what we got. Can you can you put that on the monitor, Jamie? I saw guys asking questions in here. Man, Patreon looks very different from the laptop to my phone. Like <laughs> you don't how is it not like right there in front of you, Jamie? Let's have one of the listeners call in and tell us what episode this is. Eight. 28. Is this, are you ready? You don't even have your headphones on. We're already recording. Uh-oh. Are you ready? Uh, uh-huh. I mean, we know what episode it is. Ready for spaghetti? It's 28. Seconds are over. Like I'm going to do a little uh, a PSA. I'm going to do a PSA. You ready? Have any, you have any friendly companies you want to shout out? No. You, none of your friends. None of your boys have companies that you want to shout out. Somebody's taking care of you, hooked you up. Guys, you were in, SOE, in, special operations equipment. Guys, you're all your, with that are starting something. Get all your bags from SOE. No, I heard you're going to be a hog farmer. No, no, uh-uh. I, I I heard you're going to be a pig farmer. No, no, no pigs. Mm, no pigs. I think you might be mistaken on this. No pigs. No, no pigs. I heard your boy with all the property was getting some hogs. No, he's not going to get anything until he's out here permanent, and that's going to be a couple years. I heard you just went behind enemy lines. I did go behind deep. Deep behind enemy lines, all the way to the elbow in it. All I was, I was deep behind the enemy lines. Yes, definitely all the way to the elbow. SoCal, like or? I had to go, I had to go through checkpoints. <laughs> I had to go through. It was like it, it was like Nazi Germany, fucking nineteen thirty eight, going through checkpoints and shit. Going Dogs like, barking at you, like Arizona to California, like no, border uh, patrol checkpoints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What they ask you? Uh, they didn't ask me anything. No, were no, they, they, were they friendly. They, they saw what I had on the back and they were like. Is there anything in the truck? Nope. What was on the back? Come on. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> an M151. Shut the fuck up. Another one? Another one, yeah. Is it run? Uh, no. Whose is it? Well, it's... Yours, it's kind a, of? It's the communities. <laughs> the uh, community, I like yeah. it. Yeah, man, I'm talking about... Pulling this red podcast episode twenty eight, so I'm told, but I think it's not. I think it's a different number, but we'll go with twenty eight. We'll, we'll go with twenty eight. We'll see 28, how twenty eight. Deuce, deuce. Hey, I have to say, ocho, couple. cinco, seis, siete, ocho, ocho, deuce, also. I have to say a couple things, okay? Because your your boy keeps blowing me up. Who uh, is your, my boy? Your boy that does the shorts. He keeps blowing me up, and I don't like the way the shorts come out. Anyways, I. Again. What do you mean he keeps blowing you up? Like he's contacting you? No, or? no, no, no. He's he's putting me on these shorts. Okay, hold and on. And the way he's cutting these let shorts. Let me defend. Let me defend. <laughs> he's cutting these shorts. It's uh, let not, me de- not Let good. me defend. Go ahead, defend. There's a lot of comments like, dude, if you give five more seconds of context, these would make more sense. And my reply always is, if we gave five more seconds of content, t- context, you never would have fucking commented. You've right. never commented this on is these true. videos. This is true. So the hopes with that is... It's not for those dipshits. It's for every one dude commenting. There's a thousand dudes watching, right? So yeah, I know. We I need know. them to cross deck and then want want, want, want the to whole watch. thing. Yeah. Wants the whole thing. Um, but anyways, so uh, Miley is chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff. He's yeah, not I can't Secretary believe, of Defense. I can't believe people were like, oh, did he say Secretary of Defense? I said the- Secretary of Defense, but that's because... Those those douche those douche nozzles are all the exact same position. So Miley's chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, and yes, you do swear an oath to the Constitution, but also the officers and staff and CEOs appointed above you, and the President of the United States, who is the Commander in Chief. And in nowhere in the Constitution does it say, "Hey guys, if you disagree with me, you can call the bad guys and let them know what's going on." And that's exactly what that douche nozzle did. He is a fucking traitor to the United States. We actually have a name, a specific name. For that type of person, it's called Benedict Arnold. And the difference between uh, Miley and Benedict Arnold is at least Benedict Arnold was a sovereign citizen of England, where this douche nozzle, Miley, he is an American citizen, so his treasonous acts are even more heinous than Benedict Arnold. 
I was surprised to see how many people were like, who is this person? Oh, he's what the, did he do? Like there, that's in yeah. the comments. Like, how the fuck do you not like whatever? Oh. Okay, maybe you don't know. Maybe they don't know. It's, was, it's okay. There was some. Do you see these icebergs floating around in here? Yeah, that doesn't look good. It's super good. That doesn't look good at all. It's salt, but, but it tastes like cotton candy. Mm, I don't know what it tastes like. Probably cotton candy. They all. It doesn't matter which company. They all taste like cotton candy. It's a uh, Redmond's mm -hmm. salt. Redmond salt. They make a pre-workout. Makes my teeth itch. That's, how I that's know. a really good yeah, that's work pre-workout. That's working. Yeah. That's yeah. a really your teeth are itching. Anyways, oh. and the other thing is, I have no idea what questions are going to come out of John's mouth, and so there is no preparation for any of this. You get what you get. Oh yeah, I think yeah. that's that's kind of a given. But the dip, sh the the people that you're addressing, I know, aren't going to see this, right? These, maybe not. Maybe not. These are just these are. This is just for my viewers of the podcast. I want you to know that I think they know. I do it. know who these a holes Be are because they're talking about. Uh, th these are NPCs. These are they're non-player characters, right? They're the people in the video game that you walk up to and you chop their head off with a sword, or you run over them, or you. Bad things happen to NPCs, NPCs yeah. and that's what these people are. They're the NPCs. This is like when Rogan's like, never read the comments. Yeah. Yeah. Never read the comments. And, and it's weird, too, if you look at that that video, for instance, that little clip, right? Or another one that's still very active is the 13 mag loadout or 15 oh, mag yeah. loadout. If you look at it on Instagram versus TikTok versus Facebook, on Instagram... Most dude, there's there's like fucking a hundred dudes in there. Like, yeah, we ran out of bullets too. I carried fifteen max. I carried thirteen max. We ran out of ammo. Yes, that happened to us also. Whereas on TikTok, and I think it's age. I think it's age it on probably TikTok. Is age. And and that whole uh, this is bullshit. Uh, it's a six mag loadout. Is a combat load. Yeah, maybe on Camp Pendleton. <laughs> you know why? It got, I'll bet they don't even know why it was a six mag loadout. It was a six mag loadout because that's what that fucking LBV carried right that's that silly camo one in the 90s that had um that had the grenades on the side right yeah. now that was two four five six it was singles six, in the front singles. one two three four f no it was six mags it was six, six mags two frags but then when you go to armor where are you going to put those other mags of course it's a six mag that's all that fucking fits on there well it's a it's a it's a logistical issue it's not when we say a combat load of six mags, it's a logistical issue. It's not a uh, anything that has any forethought outside of that. It's just so that the fucking bean counters, when they are trying to allocate ammunition to an infantry battalion, they have a specific number to count out, right? So when an infantry battalion is peacetime back at home, that's how they allocate that ammunition across the board to the infantry so they know that when you're going to train, you have this allocation of ammunition, War is 100% different than that. At no fucking time ever, 20 years, when we were, when it was time to actually go to war, did anyone ever go, uh, do you have your six mags of 556? Five, five, they gave you as much ammo as you would physically want to carry, and even more, because combat is a different animal than anything that you're going to uh, entertain in the free world. So, no, at no time, like... I mean, fuck, when we went ashore in Mogadishu, we probably had a company's worth of ammunition. Did we need any of it? No. <laughs> but at the time, all we at the time all we knew was fucking Rangers and Delta guys have been killed. The city's on fire, we're going to war. So you you take what you take what you can carry because again, it's about fighting and dying with what's on your back. Um at no time, even in you think about when I was in Iraq, there were two incidents where support could have been used, where we could have been, where our uh, teams could have been reinforced. And they didn't come. Like, they didn't come because they weren't sure. You know, the, the uh, company that was supporting us didn't come because they weren't sure of the situation. So, again, all that bullshit that people pretend that they, all that bullshit that they pretend they see on TV or wherever they're getting their information about how the fucking cavalry is going to come and they're going to rescue you and all that. Bu it's bullshit. The QRF's you, not coming. You get what you get. Now, I'm not saying the QRF doesn't come because the QRF does come. How'd, but that, how'd that work out in Benghazi? It didn't work good in Benghazi and it didn't work good in Mogadishu. I mean, there's those are extreme situations, again, and what I'm saying Which is... Which is why we know them. 
Yeah. What I'm saying is you, you don't have, we you don't know the ones that work. <laughs> yeah, you carry the you carry the load out for the fight that you're not expecting because that's the one where you're really going to need the things that you, you know, again, no one there's no one ever who's ever said I, I have too much ammunition. You said something that really has stuck with me and you know, rang home um when you were talking about ammo. And you're like, "Yeah, I'm going to carry, you know, 15 loaded mags plus more ammo plus all this shit." They can lose a motherfucker in peacetime at 29 Palms and have him die in the fucking desert. They'll just, the Marines will take off and a dude will accidentally be left behind, right? So you, you have to have that plan. Every, every person's experience, every person's experience may vary. Again, you said something to me a long time ago that totally doesn't make sense, but it's, it's a hundred percent true that. 1% of the population serves in the military. So most of the people watching this fucking thing doesn't have never heard. I heard that like yesterday. I heard that. I heard Uh, Mike Glover say that again yesterday. So 1% of the population serves in the military. So, you know, most of you who are watching this have never served in the military. So you have a, you have an idea what the military is like, but it's solely based off of hearsay and movies. Um, And then there's another large pop and out of that one percent it's like three percent maybe four percent that serve in actual infantry units so you still have a huge group of individuals that served in the military that never you know that never leave the airfield never you know they drive trucks they're mechanics they're and there's nothing wrong with that support is support the you know the the combat element can't do its job if everybody else isn't doing their job but again, those are people who served, but are never out in the fucking shit, are never out in the fucking desert. Uh, so experiences may vary. I know there's going to be guys like, oh, it never happened when I was in the military. But fuck, I can tell you six times, at least six times, at least six times in my 20 years where the parent command forgot about us intentionally left us behind or just had no idea had no idea we were out there at all and and that is an eye-opening event so what that means is what you carry you carry on your back what you're going to fight and die with now peacetime's a little bit different obviously um so it's it's mostly water and food that you're worried about that's why you know all through the late 80s early 90s even close to 2000 i was carrying fucking two four like eight quarts of water yeah because well yeah all battalion recon guys were fucking because you you just you just didn't know if it, you didn't know if your two-day op was going to end up turning into a four-day op because they completely forgot about you and this is not at just small unit level you know when i was the first incident i had was uh first year in uh First, uh, first year in the fleet, I was with Charlie Company. I was a saw gunner. Uh, we did the longest helo raid ever conducted up until that point. I don't know if they've beat that record, but like exercise, yeah, exercise. Fifty miles off the fifty miles off the coast of California, we flew all the way to uh, a target in Arizona. Did a farb, hit the target, flew back. One of the aircraft in that exercise went down didn't cr- it didn't crash it was able to land had a uh, transmission problem or something it was a 46 and no so- that can't be those aren't flown anymore <laughs> those don't ex- that's only vietnam jeff yeah it was a 46 and it went down and the battalion again we were doing this long range raid and the battalion decided hey well, it would be great we had a helicopter go down let's do a trap so my pl- tactical tactical readiness urban what is that i don't fucking tactical recovery remember. aircraft personnel yeah and so we're going to do a trap so we now that's basic that's going to be like the mspf the maritime special purpose forces or well that, that, that would it be was like the MS- it, platoon it, it, would do that it was the we were all mspf at that time so they took our platoon and we did the trap mission we landed we did our 360 we laid out in our defensive positions and we waited <laughs> And we waited. And then uh, the pilot goes, so this is Yuma, Arizona. The raid went off at 5 o'clock in the morning. And when we, uh, and it was summertime. 
So by 930, it was 120 degrees in the desert, and there's no shade, and we're all just laying out there in our, our kit. And the pilot actually got out of the helicopter and was like, hey, um, you guys should probably stop that and get underneath the helicopter. No one's coming to get us. And our lieutenant was like, what? No, we just, we're doing a trap. They're going to come get us. And he's like, no, 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 no. They're going to bring the part out here. We're going to fix the bird in the desert. And then we're going to fly this bird back. But all the air crews, because we used every aircraft that we had to get make this happen, all the air crews are over their air crew time. So they have to they have to sit it out for eight hours before they can come back. Now, mind you, they're flying all the way back to the they're flying all the way back to the ship, right? So they're flying back to California. Uh, but that would be a good training exercise for how shit's really going to be. Well, you would yeah, think. they're flying they're flying all the way back to California. So my lieutenant, our lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Kim, I believe he was a good lieutenant. He rounded us all up and was like, "Lay underneath the." let's get find whatever shade you can find at this point the two captains that, <laughs> that were flying the 46 they have stripped down to their underwear and they are walking around the helicopter just kicking rocks and shit well the obviously everybody flies away about noon a 53 comes in right ch53 so we're like fuck yeah we are out of here the ch53 lands and i'm like I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it, and through the windows, through the windows, I can see M151 Jeeps. I'm like, fuck. You can sit in the Jeeps. Nope. They won't let you. They won't you? let you. You know, you, if, it would, it, you know, vehicles plus personnel, it really wouldn't put the, it really wouldn't put the, uh, put the helicopter in any, in any strain, but they would never do that. And so, so the crew chief opens the door, he takes, he's got two five gallon water cans. He puts them on the ground and two, mind you, two sack lunches and puts those on top of the thing. He doesn't even come near us. And then they just fly away. I feel like they thought we were just going to run Mob and them. get them on the, <laughs> on the, on the, on the helicopter. And then they fly away. And so I think we were there for, you know, probably 15 hours on the ground. And eventually a, a Huey can't, no, it was another 46. A 46 came out, landed. They brought this part, crew chief and another crew chief. They wrangled the part in the helicopter, and then we took off and flew back to Camp Pendleton. Uh, yeah. we get, and they typically have a toolkit with them that'll do everything they need to do. Uh, I, I think they brought tools because it was a, it was a serious part. It was it was a it was a serious enough part where I was like, the fuck you're gonna. You're changing that out here in the, and then we're just going to fly away in the sand. Not just, and, and my thing was, we're not just like flying to Yuma and then spending the night and fucking making letting, sure it's good. Letting real mechanics get in there and fix it. No, we flew to California. <laughs> we, yeah, I mean, we farped in Yuma and then flew back to California, but, uh, um, so it was that, it was that kind of seriousness of a part. And we flew back to, we got, we actually got lucky because, we flew back to California, and when we got to the coast, it was it was uh, fogged in, and so the pilots are like, "Ah, we can't we can't risk it. We're not going to go look for the ship. Um, do you guys want to stay? We can drop you off at Camp Horno, and then we'll just pick you up tomorrow." And so we're like, "Fuck yeah, we're going to stay at Camp Horno tonight." So they dropped us off at Camp Horno, and picked us up the next day, and then took us back to the ship. Um, so we go back to the ship, and everybody was like. Dude, you guys were so lucky. <laughs> you guys are so lucky that you didn't that you didn't make the trip back. And I'm I think hey Hayes was one of the guys and I'm like, why? What happened? He goes, The ship was not where it was supposed to be. Oh shit. It was too far off the coast. And they were they had helicopters that were like out of fuel. They thought they they were actually making arrangements for putting fucking helicopters in the water. I'm like, God damn, that's some crazy shit, but I mean that's the kind of that's the kind of training. Can those birds not refuel midair? Uh, well, no, no, no. The forty sixes don't have. I mean, you can, you can. I believe they can modify the forty six to. But those to boom. ones were not. But uh, typically, typically our aircraft are don't have booms. I believe the fifty threes did, but they may not even have booms either. I remember seeing those. Like we used to see those because we lived on Camp Pendleton as a kid. So we'd, we'd see the aircraft and the, the equipment and shit sitting there. And then we, when you were at a 
you're out at a like an air show and you see those things up close and you're like man this looks worse than the fucking models that i used to build as a kid like this motherfucker looks like it's literally just like glued there's panels that are mismatched color and shit well, they, you know, it's the it's only the Air Force that puts panels up. The Marine Corps likes. To, I mean, I I know they they have pretty they have pretty planes now, but it used to be uh, like uh, the forty six pilots. You, you would the ramp was always fucking greasy, and you would slide out the back of the forty sixes, or you would be you'd be in the air and something would be leaking, <laughs> and you'd just stare at it. Right, you'd just be staring at it, and the crew chief would catch you, and he'd be like, he go, hey. Let me know if it stops leaking. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, I've heard that. Like, here, crank this yeah. bucket. There's a there's a 55 you know, gallon drum, and you got to pump yeah, it manually. Like, as, lo- as long as it's as long as it's leaking, then we know the that there's there's grease in there or whatever it is that's leaking oil, and uh, it's it's good to go. That was just, is that a real thing or is that just like a joke? No, it's a real thing. Those aircraft do leak. Um, I mean, again, you know, in the in the 90s, in the 90s, there was a good chunk of those a good chunk of those 46s that were 30 years old, 30 plus years old. We actually had a confirmed Vietnam CH 46 that had been shot up. Um, they left the, they left the bullet holes in it and it was part of, I don't, I I don't know if it was the purple foxes. I don't know who had it, but they left it OD. So the, the Marine Corps had already painted all their stuff, you know, kind of that blue grayish, mm-hmm. all their helicopters are blue grayish, but this squadron, because they still had a Vietnam, uh, 46, they left that motherfucker solid OD. And so it was kind of like a, um, you were kind of cool. If you got to, if you got to get on that stick, if you got to get on that, you were like, yeah, I'm on the, I'm on the Vietnam airplane. The nostalgic, the nostalgic the aircraft. Yeah. Made so, it back. I mean, those were, those are good times, but again, different. So along along those lines, so since we're talking about comments on on social media posts, um, a very common comment is that like people really take issue, or some some whoever the fuck it is is taking issue with the the thirteen mag loadout. You said thirteen or fifteen, whatever it was, eighteen mag loadout. Well, you, it, uh, it was thirteen. I always carried thirteen mags um, plus uh, additional ammunition to reload plus the additional mags. ammunition in the in the in the assault pack and stuff like that. It's it's a trip. Guys are having an issue with that. That's what two hundred and forty rounds. I think is what it yeah, came it's up. Yeah, it's not much. And I mean, your saw your saw gunner is is carrying two hundred round belts. You know, on the gun typically, yeah. unless he's. I mean, nowadays they've got the nut sacks. Yeah, stuff, they didn't. They they always carry. You know, all my guys always carried a, a two hundred round drum on. Them. So and he's also carrying other two hundred round well, drums. He, so my saw gunners would carry uh, four. So he technically mm-hmm. had five, and then the A gunner would carry four more. Yeah. Um. And the big reason is because again, you, you don't know the fight you're going to get in. Yeah, you can you can lighten your load, but the worst the worst thing ever is the worst thing ever is to still be in the fight and be bingo. If you have 800 rounds, or you know whatever 240 rounds, and every time you come back, you have a hundred rounds left. Good, right, <laughs> good. Right. You didn't need it. That's the object. The, you not, didn't need yeah. it. But you can't ever ask. You know the the seals have a the seals had a good saying, the seals had a good saying about uh, uh one and no, one, one is, is none, none and two is one. Yep. Which means you actually need three, of whatever it is, whatever three that is, vital three is for me, four is more. Yeah. Whatever yeah. whatever that vital piece of equipment is. So, you you plus up to the max you plus up to your max capability that you can, and you you know you you hope for the best. If you if you if you carry you know, four tow missiles and you only get to shoot one. You're not, you're not going to go back and go, I only shot one. I'm going to leave these other three here. What? That doesn't make any sense. So it's, uh, you can, you can take issue with it. I did it for 20 years. Yes. My knees are fucking shot, but again, that's life support equipment. It's life support equipment. Fight and die with what's on your back. If you're fucking, if if you are Delta Rick in your basement eating your mom's peanut butter jelly sandwiches, and you only need fucking forty rounds, and every round's going to kill a bad guy, well, good for you. Most of these good guys, are, they're still breastfeeding. I mean, they're twenty three years old, and they're still I mean, on mom's tit. And I mean, most of them probably are eating cereal with warm milk. I mean, yeah. but it what it tells me because they are so rabid about it, it clearly 
because they are invested in something else, right? They've invested all their time into this curated Instagram page or whatever they're doing, and they're carrying three well, bags. They, the, the problem is we have a – we have a – and don't – Chris, don't hate on me. Uh, we have a, a training world, right? We have a training world. We have this world of firearms training that – is very specific in the type of training it does, and it escalates, right? It, it used to be, you know, you used to go out and get a handgun class. You had your, your your concealed carry, maybe one magazine, and maybe you went and did a fucking rifle class where you had your concealed carry and then one magazine for your rifle. But in order to get more and more people, we've escalated it. We've escalated to where fucking dudes are doing night vision classes. They're doing all kinds of shit. And they're gaming the game, and people are running around with their fucking plate carriers on, and they're doing all these uh, range acrobatics that aren't realistic to a combat environment. Can you right? give me an example of range acrobatics? Well, I mean, you know, uh, for example, when I think when people are talking about, I'd like to see you run with that shit on, where they're getting that from is the range. And the problem is, when you run on the square bay... The, the reason why you're running on the square bay is to increase your heart rate to create a an element of air in your shooting. So it's like doing push-ups, jumping jacks, fucking running. What you're doing is you're trying to what you're doing is trying to incorporate a bit of stress in your shooting because there's stress in combat. Uh, you lose 50% of your marksmanship skills in combat. That's not me, that's Delta Force, so go ahead and look it up, turd birds. Um so you're you're creating stress. In the in reality, you're not really the only time you're running is when you're running to cover, if you have to run to cover. Okay? And and uh, you know, the Marine Corps had a big problem when we went full body armor. When we went full body armor, the Marine Corps had a serious problem the first couple of years, uh, once the fighting really started, was guys were getting shot in the legs and in the head. The legs and the head, and they were like why the fuck is everybody getting shot in the legs and the head? It was because the body armor, again, somewhere north of, you know, once you once you load out, you're somewhere north of 80 pounds. People didn't want to lay down. Mm. Because when you lay down, you got to get the fuck back Hard up again. Back up. And it's just so there was there was a there was actually a period of time when we're doing the rotations back and forth to Iraq where they the Marine Corps instituted a a lane. It was just this fucking stupid white tape lane where you would have to go down the lane, lay down, get up, lay down, get up, lay down, get up. Um, but again, there's a idea how there's an idea how people fight, and then there's the reality of how people fight. And you're it's it, what most people think of real combat is not is not how it really is. And if, you're, and if you're listening to this, right, guys, we're not, we don't have. And a, your experience may vary. I, I mean, if you're fucking, we're if not, you're Tricky Dick Marcinko, uh, I, maybe you did run barefoot through the jungle with your M16. I pe- don't know. People are very, in, like, it, it's it's funny how upset they are by the comments. Like, we don't we don't care what you do. Like, we don't know you. Like, more power to you. You, you run around and you're fucking fast and you got three mags or six mags or whatever. I watch all that shit. It's fucking, again, it looks awesome. No, and like, I, 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 I think it's just a training thing, right? You you have to you have to increase the um, you have to increase the Disneyland effect to get more and more people to come train, right? So, but like with with that said, right? Have these motherfuckers not been shot at with paintballs? Like all that, like as a kid, get playing BB gun wars, right? We were fucking just dumping, and we had to pump them, you know. And fu- but as fast as we could, we were fucking going through BBs. Yeah. And then it was paintballs, and we were dumping fucking. We were going through a case, a thousand rounds of fucking paint, right, yeah. between just a few of us, just shooting at each other. And then it was airsoft, and the airsoft shit had fucking three hundred BBs, right? Yeah. And you're running, and you still got ten fucking mags on yeah. you. Yeah. Like, have you motherfuckers not like well, it, played it's, war? It's conditioning, right? If you it again. If you're at home watching YouTube and you say, I want to, okay, let's, what's the, what's the coolest, the hottest M4, um, you know, M4 drill, right? 
All the guys on the square bay are going to have three magazines and then the magazine of the gun because they're doing a specific thing to a specific amount of targets on a square bay. It's not real. It's not real because specific thing on a specific bay, a specific set of targets. So it's not real. So when you when you know it's not real, you can game the game. You don't have to have you don't you don't have to be prepared for, you know, for example, at no time, at no time does uh you know, I don't know, Haley have to worry about 42 fucking cardboard targets suddenly appearing over the top of the berm and running at it. he doesn't have to he knows how many targets are out there and that's how they game the game is because and you know i'm not bagging on Haley because he's a fucking great instructor but that's how you game the game and so when you see all these guys running around on square bay with their three magazines you kind of get it in your head that really that's all i need but here's the truth and again here's the truth if you feel like you have to put on your ninja black uniform, your fucking plate carrier with your plates in it, your three magazines, your goddamn helmet, your night vision, your M4 with a laser and all that. You're playing war. And if you're playing war, what I'm telling you is that's not enough. That's not realistic. You're playing war. And so you don't need that. I mean, the truth of the matter is when people are talking about self-defense, most 90% of all self-defense incidents end in three rounds. They end in three rounds. With rifles, two. So I know people don't want to hear this, but Joe Biden was actually right when he said all you need is a double-barrel shotgun. Realistically, that's all you need is a double-barrel shotgun because you can end it in two rounds. Handgun, three to five. Most of those shootings are within seven feet that's real. That's real. Fucking M4 carbine with night sights and MVGs and plate carriers and magazines on a square bay is not real. That's never, you're never going to run into that situation unless the world collapses. Again, I'm not saying don't train how you want to train, but don't, don't pretend that you're using your M4 for self-defense because it's, that's really not what it's for. It's an offensive weapon, period. It's still a good defensive weapon. Though. It can be a good defensive weapon, but th- I mean, that's, if you, if that's you, not what it's for. But if something's happening on your homestead, huh? are you going out with a pistol or are you walking out the door with a rifle? Uh, well, on my homestead, first off, if something's happening on my property, it depend, as long as they're not entering my home, I don't care what they're doing. They can steal my tractor, whatever. I don't... I don't have the financial, first off, I don't have the financial resources or the uh, legal resources to be sued in court because I did something stupid because somebody was stealing my tractor. Now, if they come into the house, it's whatever weapon is available. It may be, it may be an M4 because I'm, because I'm a crazy gun fanatic. Okay, again, I'm not saying don't, but again, I'm also saying don't pretend that all this uh, John Wick fantasy world is real. It's not real. It's all it's, a, it's all fake. It's a sad point in time. I mean, I, where again, you, where you have to qualify that that you would just not engage somebody because of the repercussions against you. Yeah, I don't have for to, a dude that was doing wrong. I mean, the, guys, even if you're just even if you're just sued after the fact by the family, I mean. Again, Which should not be legal. If there's a commission a, of a crime, they shouldn't be able to come out. Dragging an axe behind him, holding a fucking head in his hand, justify, justified homicide. But again, you still can be sued by the family in all 50 states, and the legal cost of that wrecks people. It fucking wrecks people. Uh, so... Uh, no, I'm not running around. I'm not running around looking to get in a fight. I mean, the, the truth of the matter is, I'm doing exactly what. Uh, God, what was what? Who's that knife fighter? Who's the guy that uses the karambit? Tarani. Okay. Yeah. I'm doing Steve exactly Tra- Steve Tarani. Yeah, Steve Tarani. I'm doing exactly what Steve Tarani teaches the Secret Service. Know your surroundings, avoid the fight. Yeah, everybody's getting cut in a knife fight. Know your surroundings, avoid the fight. How you avoid the fight is more important than how you can fight. I mean, 27% of all, 27% of all, um, 
gun related issues are handled just by pulling a gun. So just by seeing a gun, bad guys tend to fucking want to flee, right? So that's just by seeing a gun. The problem with that is most states brandishing a firearm is fucking illegal. And so again, yes, if I pull my, my piece and uh, Brandel sees it, he takes off running, but John is putting gas in his car and he's like, Holy shit. There's a dude over there waving his gun. I can be arrested. So it's, it's, it's more important. It's more important. Stay out of the wrong neighborhoods, pay attention to your surroundings and do everything you can to avoid the fight. Period. I know, I know the whole, it's your job to stay in the fight. No, it's not. It's, it's not. I'm a fucking civilian. It's not my job to stay in the fight anymore. It's my job to make sure I avoid the fight for a lot of reasons. One, I'm old. And so if it gets to, if it gets to the ground game, uh, I'm old. Things don't heal the way they used to. And second, there's the legal ramifications of what goes on in this country will fucking break you. So it's better to, it's better to pay attention to your surroundings, avoid places that you shouldn't be. Everybody knows the places they shouldn't be and do everything you can to stay out of the fight. I know that's contradiction that, that contradicts uh, a lot of, okay. A lot of people, but that's the truth. So as a civilian with that said, crime is on the rise everywhere. Yes. It's coming to a neighborhood near you. Maybe it's in a neighborhood. You just haven't, you've been lucky enough not to have it happen to you have a fucking plan and if you well you have to have a plan and I, again i'm not saying don't train and i'm not saying i know it makes it may sound like that I, I have no problem with you going and taking whatever ninja class you want okay you just have to understand that most of it's fantasy now to, to support some of the things you've said since you brought up travis haley um najaf when they were there he, him and ben thomas were on top of that building they ran out of bullets like that fucking air force that pilot stole that fucking helicopter against orders, took that helicopter and fucking kicked cans of ammo to them. Those guys had written That's, letters. They had fucking signed. They'd sent, they'd already authored letters going to their yeah. fucking families. The dudes embedded with them from Spain. They had some Spanish uh, military dudes with them. That dude went downstairs. They were out of bullets. That guy went downstairs and engaged targets with a knife. Like, they were out of fucking ammunition. Travis has seen that. I, I know That's what real. Travis carried yeah. because I built fucking gear for Travis. You yeah. know what Travis wore? Travis wore a fucking patrol vest. You know how many mags a patrol vest holds before you add anything else to it? 12 fucking magazines. The owner of P-Mag came into the shop and wanted us to widen that. That's why we changed the pattern so you could use the old P-Mags on there. All that whole fucking crew before... before P fucking pmag made anything except those rubber pulls right we made gear for all them dudes every fucking one of those guys and all of those vests started at 12 magazines it just it's it's like if you're if you're running three mags fucking more power to you man do what you want to do again that's not go take a patrolling class go it's take not a, fucking, a realistic it's just not a realistic idea of, of what what is not just again three mags you have to look at you have to look at a couple of things. One is sustainment rate. I was quoting it wrong. Three mags is your Walmart shopping loadout. Like if you're going yeah. to Walmart, have fucking three mags with you. Fifteen, you know, uh, fifteen rounds a minute. So in two minutes, just sustainment. That's boom, 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 boom. In two minutes, that mag is empty. Now rapid fire is forty-five rounds a minute. So less than a minute you'll be empty and what i'm going to tell you is no one is shooting and again my entire career in the marine corps was semi-automatic fire yeah the rifles had three round burst but you were never authorized to put it on three round burst i mean not i don't want to say you weren't authorized in training there's an expenditure issue they don't want you to they don't want you to fire you know more ammo than your six your six mag allocation, so there was a, a training restriction, and so everything was semi-automatic fire. Even even in combat, I don't think I ever put it on burst and fired burst. It was all semi-automatic fire. But again, forty-five rounds a minute. That's what you have to look at in your extreme situation when you're talking about ammunition, whether that's the the two forty Gulf, the saw, 
uh, the the M1 Abrams, how much ammo can you fire in a minute? And if you are you ha- and then you allocate that based off of time. So what you're telling me is when you are running around and we're in a we're in a serious fight, we're in a serious fight. You only have three minutes of ammunition on you. Now, if you look at it that way, I promise you, I promise you, you're going to carry more ammunition because three minutes, that's not enough time. That's, that is not enough time. And is your life worth more than three minutes? Is the pain in your feet or your knees or your back worth more than fucking three minutes? Of course it is. Of course it is. And that's it. And when I say 14, you know, you can, you can contact everybody from third platoon, seventh Marines. And they'll tell you, yes, Staff Sergeant made us carry fucking 13 magazines. You know, the saws had too much ammo. The 240 Gulf had too much ammo. You know, if and if you were a rocket guy, uh, if you were a rocket guy and your three-man section was coming out with me, six rockets, because, again, fuck, uh, uh, just a standard loadout for an RPG-7 is seven, so we need to be able to at least, our rockets are better and heavier, but... We need to be able to at least respond in kind. So Haji's carrying seven. Yeah. Not the shooter, though. Just somebody with him. Just the Haji. Just the dude with the RPG just the has fucking, seven. Just the, just the Iraqi. Uh, you know, usually they're using the backpack that those things are supposed to come in. So he's going to have seven. Maybe he only has one. I don't know. But I'm not, I'm not going to find out because it's not tit for tat. When you're in war, it's not tit for tat. And in all you idiots that (laughs) there was some dumb, sorry, there was some British fellow who was like, the the British army, it's shoot one, hit one. That you're such a fucking. That's because you've never been shot at. You're such an idiot. Why don't you go ahead and and read what second para did on goose green? Okay. They weren't shooting one, hitting one. They were firing as much ammo as they possibly could. As a matter of fact, they loaded maximum amount of tracers in their rifles. So it looked like they were actually more machine guns than they actually had. So you're an idiot. Nobody, nobody does that. Okay. That's not how warfare works. If warfare worked like that, you know, the war in Ukraine would already be over because all everybody be dead. (laughs) It's just, that's not how it works. Stop being stupid. Anyways, I think that's, I mean, come on. Yeah, I, if you don't want to carry 13 magazines, fine. You don't need to because you're in your mom's basement eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Carry your three or your two or your one. You, I mean, I wonder if they're. I wonder if their problem is the weight. Like they just don't. Like I see chicks at CrossFit that are moving more weight. Well, that than, I, than, than I mean, that seems the, the common theme that you know the common theme that I saw was it's because they're wearing it's because they're wearing fucking Converse. They're not wearing real fucking the, shoes either. The common theme that I saw was it was too heavy, which. It's only fifteen pound guys. Stop! Stop being a pussy. Um, I had was, a I had a nine year old kid in here the other day. Came in here, knew exactly what we were and everything. And I'm like, "How did you know about us?" He says, "I looked up surplus stores, and you guys are two towns yeah. over." So he had come from Clarksville, yeah. and he was with his mom, and he used his allowance and bought a, a airsoft shotgun, and he had this Coyote Brown plate carrier with him, and he's like, "Do you sell uh, fake plates?" And I said, "We don't sell any plates at all." I said, how much do you want them to weigh? And he's like, 20 pounds. This is a nine-year-old fucking kid. I'm like, do you know what 20 pounds is? He's like, oh, yes, I want I want a 10-pound, I want two 10-pound plates because I want it to be 20 pounds. And here's this fucking hey, nine-year-old kid. Do you remember who, what his name was? I don't. If you were watching this podcast and you come back to SOE, I will give you two plates. Yeah, he wanted he wanted a coyote dangler, which we're we ran we're building yeah. them. Yeah, I will give you two plates if you really want two plates to carry around. Um, and you really want to? Hey, I'm really gonna fuck people up right now because I just thought about this. I'm really gonna fuck people up. I also carried a sniper rifle. Holy shit! It was 24 pounds. Yeah. Oh my god! How is that possible? I'd like to see you run with that. Or what about the sass of the fifty cow? <laughs> what about the fucking fifty? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys, get your heads out of your asses. You know, in the in the old days, the marines in the old days, the marines used to have to carry the M2 and the 81 millimeter mortar and all its accru- recruitments. Or a 1919. The or 1919. That was real old days. But again, stop with your it's it's heavy. It's too heavy if you're fucking uh, running sprints on the square bay. It's heavy, but again, square bays aren't where the square bay is not where the rubber meets the road. That's not how real combat is. It's it's a, again, it's a good place to get a good understanding about your firearms and how your firearms work. 
But even, I promise you, even if you're running square bay drills, how many times are you loading your magazines? So if that was real combat, you don't, in real combat, guys, you don't have time to go click, click, click. It just doesn't work that way. There's a, there's a, actually, I, we might've talked about this last week, but there is a, an excellent video of a Ukraine soldier in full on fight for his life against some Russians. I think it was, I think it's Wagner group guys, but he is, he looks like he's by himself and he is firing at the rapid rate with AKs, M4 carbines. Uh, he pulls up an RPK at one, yeah, 70, or an RPG. The guy with a 70 year old man with him. Yeah. And, it, and he's throwing these guns down on the ground. And then this 70 year old man is crawling out of a foxhole, loading mags back in these guns and throwing him back to this guy. Um, I hope, well, I, I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume that my brave Ukrainian fighter survived because the video is up on YouTube. But that, my friends, is what real combat is like. At no point in time did that guy go, oh, all these fucking extra weapons are heavy. All this extra ammo is heavy. No, nope. all the grenades he threw, the fucking RPGs that he was, the RPG sevens that he's holding over his head and shooting towards the, shooting towards the Russians. Um, I mean, there's there's a point where there's a damn Russian that's jumping over the trench that is connected to his trench. The dude is not more than 15 yards away. And, and he, this guy is just rocking and rolling. Uh, that's real combat. I mean, the truth of the matter is the fucking combat that's going on in Ukraine right now is the realest it's ever been. I don't want to, I don't want to downplay our, our American veterans, but we have not, we've had not, we have not had to fight under the type of artillery and, and, uh, the sides weren't as equal. Yeah, as weapons and weapon systems that the Ukrainians are currently have to fighting under. You know, we're America is great. We fucking we have the best logistical services in the world. We have the best air force in the world. We have the best navy in the world. So we can dominate a airspace very quick. Uh, so it allows U.S. forces to fight without having to dig foxholes and get in bunkers and shit like that. I mean, the Russians are shooting twenty eight thousand. They're shooting twenty eight thousand fucking artillery shells a day. Well, not, That's only, crazy. not only that. I mean, the in in Iraq and Afghanistan, those those guys didn't have armor. They didn't have air support. Right. They didn't have fucking artillery. Shit, did, did they even have mortars? I mean, they didn't. Yeah, they had. I mean, they had mortars. They they had all the. I mean, the reality is, you could run into any conventional weapon system that the Iraqi army had. Like, so they had eighty one millimeter mortars. They had. I mean, they even used. Uh, up and up where we were at, they even took uh, twelve point seven French helicopter rockets and wired those up to timers to fire made fucking homemade launchers and shit. And so they're firing helicopter rockets at us. If they could get a hold of it, so they were taking the pods and well, using- no, they were, they were taking the rockets. So they would they I, I'm assuming they just found these at the airfields at one of the abandoned airfields, and uh, they would they what they would do is they would take uh, heating duct. So they'd take heating duct, and then they would make a casement of concrete. So they'd make a square box. Heating duct would be in the middle, and then they would encase it in concrete, and then they would put the rocket in that wow. heating duct, and then that would be hooked to a washing machine timer and a battery, and then they would crudely aim it at, in the direction they needed, you know, whatever direction they thought would hit us, and uh, turn that washing machine timer and then walk away, and then, you know, 15 wow. minutes later, you'd have a rocket fly at you. Now, uh, where we were at, most of the, unfortunately for Syria, most of those rockets went right into Syria and, you know, blew up a goat or some shit. Uh, we did have we did have a vehicle hit with one of those, and that was pretty bad. But, uh, so, but anything you can think of, if they could find it, you know, improv, you know uh, war is the mother of all improvisation. Ask the Ukrainians who are fucking dropping hand grenades with regular home drones. Uh, anything they could find, they could use against you. So speaking of the British guy talking about one hit, one kill type stuff, did you notice that the other dude in there in the comments? No, I that uh, was engaging with him. We I have just, a we have a friend named Andrew. He's a he's a marine. Yeah, and uh, he's got a little training group that he's he's doing some training out of he Florida. Sent, he sent me he sent me some screenshots. You know, because I was again the British guy. I was going to be like, oh, okay, and, let me, Andrew lit him up. I'm like, let me. Let me show you all the ways that you were wrong and do not know how the British Army actually works in combat or how any unit works in combat. Okay? Any unit. Uh, 
and then he, Andrew was showing me his. I'm like, all right, I'm I'm not going to bother. Andrew's got him. <laughs> so Andrew's, um, I think he's coming out here for Self Reliance Festival. He trains. Right. He's been out here a lot. Um, he does some sewing. He's got a nylon gear company. He does some some cool shit. Um, but he's doing a patrol, a homestead patrolling class. Okay. So all these guys that have homesteads and you know prepper groups, mags, whatever. Yeah. Um, they kind of get together and you know everybody wants to go and and take a class and it's you know square bay range stuff and run fast and shoot lots of bullets and I mean, you know the, get really the, cool photos. That's right? the cool shit. But the 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 real the the truth of it is yeah is that's that's one percent of that shit and yeah. you hope that you never have to use those skills. The real is. LPOP, right? Uh, yeah. Listening post, observation post. The difference yeah. is daytime and nighttime, right? Yeah. Patrolling your perimeter, sitting and just waiting and hoping some yeah. shit does not happen, right? And can you do that with one person? Can you do that with four people? Like, what does that actually look like? Well, he's teaching a class. Having come from, you know, Marine Corps background and, and being a rifleman in the Marine Corps. Is that somebody on the door? Was that somebody at the door or was that you? So, so coming from that background, he has put a package together and he's teaching this. And I said, man, you should come out to self-reliance festival and maybe not teach the actual class, maybe teach the class and sell the class, right. For guys that want to do it. We definitely have enough property here to do it. Um, but just give an hour lecture on this, right? Why do they need it? What does it look like? This is what you haven't thought of. This is how you think it's going to be. Here's some things, Mm -hmm. you know, how do you secure your perimeter? right? Right. And for all you guys that have this place in the middle of nowhere and you think nobody's coming, they're fucking coming. They're coming. Like, they're coming. If you, you, get- need, you need community right now. You need to set your people yeah. up and know who the fuck that's going to be. If, if you can't get a motherfucker to come over and help you cut some trees down, they're definitely not showing up when some bullets are being shot at your ass. And if they're coming, they're coming to take your shit. Yeah, if you can, you know, if you can get there. If you can comfortably get to wherever you're going, meaning you're driving your car to your house every day, it doesn't matter if it's 100 miles off the beaten path. When stuff is... What's up? Okay. Uh Uh-oh. I knew it was ATF. Shit. And somebody else. Are we back on? The eye of Sauron. Are we back on? I have Sauron. Are we back on? What were we talking about? I have no idea. Um, The dream police? The thought police? Probably something to do with, you know... Crazy comments on the YouTubes and the mm. and the TikToks, but oh. I've, I've I've grown out of that phase. Have you? I will no longer be looking at any of your guys' comments because who tipped of you, you off lunatics. to it? I just saw I, there was just one video. I can't remember what which Do video. You comment on them? Mm-hmm. I did. Who, who are you in there? I'm like uh, Ass Master Forty Seven. No, I, when I signed up for TikTok, like again, I have no content on my TikTok page. I signed up for TikTok to see content, not to put content. I saw a so, guy commenting on my live feed last night. It just said Facebook user. <laughs> yeah, so mine is like, uh, it's like, it's like 347925 dude. But again, if you look at the comments, you're going to see when I comment, when I comment, I comment in the first person. So maybe those people are like, oh, this is actually him on here. And so if you look at those comments, you'll know what my TikTok page is. And if you go to my TikTok page to be my friend, you're gonna go. Hmm. He's got no com. He's got no content on here because I, you know, again, I am not capable of doing all this. You can set all your shit to private too, yeah. where they can't see none of your shit. Well, I, I, I'm just not capable of doing any of this. This is all. all well, you this, mean you don't want to do it? No, I'm not capable. All the magic that you see before you is is a product of uh, John Willis's uh, longing for more content and Brandel's ability to turn these into content so austin austin's chopping all that austin yeah austin i mean austin's making the facebook page but again you know just like joe rogan there's a there's a team in the background uh it's not it's not one person and and i am definitely i don't have a team and i don't you know reality is i probably should have done my content probably should have been all unimog because i've done some crazy shit with the unimog you still can do that um yeah, but I'm not, you know, the crazy shit I've done with the Unim, like, uh, crazy maintenance shit, um, crazy maintenance shit that I've done with the Unimog. I'm not, I'm not going to do it again. So I kind of, you hope you're not. You, I kind of wasted my time. You know, you know. I kind of wasted. I kind of. I can wasted already tell you what's going to happen. What's going to happen? You're going to be like, oh man, there's a Unimog, right? That'd be a good parts truck. You're going to buy it, but it's not going to have the part you need. So you're going to buy another parts truck, and then you're going to look at those two non-running parts trucks, and you're going to be like. I could swap these together and make one. And then you're going to have two running Unimogs and one kind of parts truck. You're going to do it again. You might as I well. I want to, 
I want a, I want a chase truck for the Unimog. I think there, you should totally there's have a lot a chase of, truck for the Well, Unimog. when I when I say that, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, external attachments that will go on the Unimog that the Unimog does not have space for, and so there's some dude in Louisiana who's selling another See? 419 Unimog that has a that he took all the implements off <laughs> and put a bed on it. So it has a it has a cargo bed on it. And I'm like, that would be perfect. How much? But is then it? again, uh, it was not that expensive. But but and then I was like, wait a minute, that's fucking in Mississippi. That's like six hours in normal time. That would probably be like seventy hours in Unimog time. No, that'd be a great. This would be a great. <laughs> you know, this would be a great launch to your Unimog U- channel because U- we could Unimog drive time. the Unimog to Mississippi. No, 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 no. And then come back we with would the have, other Unimog. We would have to drive a regular vehicle to Mississippi, and then and then attempt to drive the. It's a you know, it's a flashback. It's Why a, don't we just put it on this trailer out here? I mean that would be cool, but that wouldn't be as cool as driving it back from. I mean, again, it's a it's a tiring endeavor. Like when I'm when I am out, you could stop and plow people's driveways on the way. When I am out at when I am out unimogging, when I'm at John's. Pulling stumps out or moving dirt, I can I can me personally I can only do it for like two hours because it beats you to death. Because you're just like no, it's just there's just so many. It's a it's a mechanical 1980s thing. There's so many things you have to do and you have to do them right, or the truck will be like fuck you, I'm not doing that. And if you you know if imagine you if you had a skid steer, it would be fun, but or it wouldn't fun or no, it wouldn't be as fun. It comes with air conditioning. It wouldn't be as fun. It has Bluetooth. It's, the sweat is all part of the experience. You know having, you to, open, having to manually roll down a window. They, you know when you open that is part of the experience. Full of full of eight hundred and forty round five five six on stripper clips and yes. little cl- canvas. Right, it has that very unique smell. Uh huh. That's how the Unimog is. It has its own unique smell. Yeah, it does. It has its own unique smell. It does not smell like any other vehicle. It does, and it's but it's a it's a stout little truck. I love it. It's fun to play with. Um, I mean, I, a skid steer would be, you know, they're painting them. I see all these guys painting them black and army green and shit. Um, if you go to your, uh, Camden National Guard Armory, they have tactical fucking skid steers, like armored up those little, just like yours. Mine, mine clearing. Uh, I don't know what, I, I think it's just, I think it's just, I see uh, a lot of SWAT teams with them. I think it's just the, um, being able to operate them in a hostile environment, you know, so for the longest time, if you were a D9 dozer guy in the military or, or even just a regular truck driver, right? You're a regular truck driver. We didn't give them a lot of the same things that the uh, that the forward troops would get. So trucks with no armor, shit like that. And the type of warfare that we fight now, everywhere is a battlefield. So, you know, that's why all the fucking, all the trucks got up, ar- all the uh, semi trucks got armored up in Iraq, and I'm sure that's the same thing. That you know, you don't you don't want to be in a fucking skid steer with a little bullshit window. Yeah, now they've got like at. a they've got a, a breaching like a battering yeah, ram on the yeah, front of them. Yeah. But if that fails and the dude's reinforced his door, they'll just run that motherfucker through the side of the yeah building. through the side of the building. Yeah, because your your homes are made of fucking tissue paper nowadays. Even the brick ones around here, that's just a facade. Yeah. It's a it's a fucking they're two by fours. They uh. When we had the breakout in Waverly, the breakout. Yeah, they had a break. They had a the jail got. I've couple, I've not heard of. Oh, this. you haven't heard it? Yeah, three guys broke out of the jail, but I was it, like, how the? F- okay, well, El Cajon Jail. Yeah, was like four stories or something. Yeah. Guys were breaking out of there and tying bed sheets together and shimmying down because the walls were fiberglass. Really? Yes. Huh. Yeah, they were fiberglass. Uh, well, these are this this jail in Waverly was made in early 1900s. I thought they made a new jail. I thought they they're, made a new jail. They're trying to, but they haven't. They haven't Something broke about ground. Permitting for elevators or some bullshit. Yeah, they haven't broke ground. But this jail was made in like the 1900s, and uh, apparently the should I say this on here? Is anybody from that's going to get incarcerated in Waverly going to use my information in order to do a big breakout? Um, the the mortar is like tissue paper, and so they just like it's escape from Alcatraz. They use spoons to get out of their jail cell, and what do what do three guys break out of jail for? Pizza? No. It's drugs. Oh. <laughs> drugs. 
the the uh, what so, do you call them? So they should just sedate them in prison. What do you call what do you call the uh, like demolition man? We'll just freeze you for. What do you call the uh, the, the the good inmates? What are those trustees? Trustees. So they have trustees, and apparently <laughs> they have trustees that get to do grounds maintenance and shit like that. And there's a there's a building right next door to the jail, and apparently a trustee left some drugs in the bushes, and these let the guys know, and so, so they, they broke out. So they broke got out the dope, <laughs> came back to jail. No, no, two of them escaped. One of them got tangled in the bob wire, and so he was he was <laughs> captured. Uh, he was apprehended, and then the other two, I think. I think the I think the one of them was captured that week, and then the other one was on the lam for two weeks before they got him back in jail. But uh, but that is an interesting facility. I hope the sheriff. I, I hope you I don't get mad. You wanted to buy that. I, I that's that's how I found out about the mortar because I was telling I was telling our friend there. I'm like, hey, when they do the new jail, I want to buy the old jail and turn it into an armory. And she's like, you don't want that. It's fucking made of tissue. <laughs> you know, it's the the mortars, all that. And I'm like. I know, but you still got jail cells and stuff. I want a that couple would, of the jail cells. That would be cells. so cool. I want the fronts. I want the doors. Doors, yeah. Um, anyways, I forgot what I was going to tell you about that. Anyway, uh, the jail. It's made of tissue paper. Yeah, they escape. Because we're talking about the skid steers. Oh, skid steers, yeah. Yep. Um, Let me look at this Patreon question right here. Okay. We got a Patreon question? Yeah, there's a Patreon question. Where, Where is Patreon at? Uh, on Patreon. Is it on Patreon? Is there yeah. a Patreon channel? It's, Can I watch uh, Patreon it's a, videos? It's a website called Patreon. Can I watch Patreon com. videos? Uh, if you're a member, you can. Oh, only if I'm a member? How do I become a member? You go to Patreon. Patreon? And you pick the creator that you like. The creator? The content? Yeah. Okay. This is from Michael Keith. Jesus, that's a long one. With January 6th being such a big deal, okay. I believe it shows the lack of how many people know the history of of the bonus expeditionary force in DC mm, after yeah, World War One, yeah, yeah. it's it's info worth sharing. Some of our World War Two heroes slaughtered World War One veterans. Yep, and their families that just wanted the money owed to them. Crazy story. Yeah, they went through um, bonus marchers, and uh, they actually lit the tents on fire, killed yeah. some children and some wives and stuff. They that were would... they were living, they were camping in front of. There's like a park. I guess it's where the reflecting pool is now. Yeah, or they, something. they were camping in front of the White House, and they were going to stay there until the government paid them the money that they promised them. Now. They were trying to force the government to pay them early uh, because obviously this, the great depression happened. Who could have thought that was going to happen? Uh, I think the, I think it was a, I think the bonus money was at 10 years or maybe even five years. So they were trying to force the government to pay them early because of the depression. Were they violent? There, there was an element of some violence, but it was, it, you know, nothing like uh Nothing, nothing like, like we're, Antifa. Yeah, nothing like Antifa, because it was all directed towards the uh, towards the White House, really, and uh, and so the president decided that he was going to use the army to break up these rebel rousers, and <laughs> MacArthur was in charge. This would be this would be the first time MacArthur defied orders of the president of the United States, um, and so. The goal was to move. They basically had a they had an encampment, right? So there was there was an encampment where all the families were living, and the goal was to force them back into the encampment because they were all kind of out in front of the protesting out in front of the White House, and so they used the army with uh, horses and pushed them back into the encampment. When they got to the encampment, the president was like, "Okay, that's enough. Knock it off," and. Our boy said, "Nah, let's 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 push this to the end." And that's when he went in there, took the troops in there, and they burned down all the buildings and started stamping all the yeah. tents and shit with the horses. Yeah. And there was some yeah. some fires caught in there. And yeah, another it's another classic example. If you think your government gives a shit about you, they don't. They don't care about you at all. And uh, the the more horrific portion of it is the more horrific portion of it is is you had all these veterans who went into World War One, which was the the first time on a global level that chemical weapons were used on the norm. So you have all these World War One veterans that are getting fucking gassed. So some of those guys in that some of those guys in that camp experienced the hell on earth that chemical warfare is. 
and fucking MacArthur used gas on them. <laughs> they, I, again, it wasn't, obviously it wasn't mustard gas, but it was CS gas. And imagine the, the PTSD you would have from that. I'm actually surprised. Again, I am surprised. And maybe it was just the time. And I, I like, could this ever happen again? No. Veterans now would start shooting back. Right, the would, veterans now would, would be. Would they though? Yeah, a veterans now. Which veterans? Would? Veterans now. If if we had a situation where uh, I don't know, fifty thousand veterans, let's just say, let's just say, uh, because Biden's an idiot and they decide, you know what we're going to do, we're going to stop paying uh, veterans benefits, and you have. Has that you know, ever happened? Uh, not yet. No. They always threaten it. Yeah, they always threaten it. But let's say you have fifty thousand veterans that show up in front of the White House. Um, the first thing they're, they're going to do is get the National Guard involved. But those veterans, unlike past, are going to show up with guns. And Are they going to show up? Can, yeah. you get into D- can you get into D.C. with guns? If there's enough of you, it won't matter. Right? Uh, and so those veterans are going to show up with guns, even if it's not guns, even if it's not guns in the open. I mean, I feel like at the point that they're burning down your tents and gassing your kids – there's going to be a firefight that the that the you know MacArthur wouldn't have been ready for because the bonus marchers did not you know they didn't fire back and I get it, it was a depression so in my head I'm thinking even if you did have a rifle no bullets you wouldn't have you would have already sold it and all that because you know the the bonus marchers the bonus marchers could have had BARs full auto BARs they could have had Thompson submachine they could have had all that because they could have went to Sears and just bought it off the shelf at that time period and had real machine guns. As a matter of fact, the bonus marchers, again, I understand that it was the depression and they didn't have the money, but the bonus marchers, if properly backed, could have had better weapons than MacArthur would have had. I mean, they were showing up with swords and pistols. So you said that was the first time he defied orders. Oh, the second time was in Korea. Uh, his, him moving to the 38th, him moving all the way to the Yalu River, uh, was in defiance of the president of the United States, and that is the reason why the Chinese entered the war. Because the China, you know, MacArthur's MacArthur's thought at the time was, we're going to fight China anyways, so let's put ourselves in a position uh, to where we can fight them. Uh, and the president was not about that. We he didn't want to get in a fight with a nuclear powered country, and so it's military arrogance that happens all the time. MacArthur believed that the Chinese didn't have the capability to fight the U.S. military. Do you, and, do you think maybe somebody else was telling MacArthur to do that, right? The power, like the people that no, actually No, no, no. But MacArthur was, MacArthur was a, a, a very eccentric, ego-driven individual. Uh, you know, when, they, when you see the video of him landing, when you see the, him, the video of him landing back on the Philippines, they took that like 20 times. You know, he kept making him do it over because his pipe wasn't in the right hand or whatever. Uh, he's very ego eccentric. And so he believed that he was going to have to fight the Chinese anyways. And why not put yourself in a position, a better position, because he didn't think the Chinese had the capability. And the problem was while we were marching past the 38th parallel, the Chinese were like, hey, this motherfucker is going to attack China. And so they had already put 100,000 troops on the border that MacArthur did not know about. And that's how the whole Chosen Reservoir fiasco started because the Chinese were ready to put 100,000 guys in the field and we weren't ready to fight them. Um, I mean, I don't want to say we weren't ready to fight them. You know, uh, How's that compared to now? It's not, it's, it's, it's a little different because the general, so the, the general officers that were in World War II were more uh, ego driven, right? So George Patton, officers like that were more ego driven. The general officers that we have now are politically driven. So they're always looking for that next political position. The, the difference is you could kind of say that, uh, to a certain extent, like even MacArthur and Patton and some of the other ones would would kind of would kind of ensure that you had the proper training and proper equipment to the best of their ability because them winning 
you know, them winning only makes them look better. So, uh, you could, you could say that they were a little more troop friendly, but then again, they were also a little more, uh, they would take more risks with their troops. So it's a give and take there, but politically now, a fucking four star doesn't give two shits about the fucking guy on the, the the infantry guy that's in Syria right now, standing on a street corner. He doesn't even know that motherfucker's there. They don't care. They're just looking for the next bump, the next position up. Who? What, what's the next? Can I be chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff next? That's all they're looking for. Yeah, it's all it's, politics. It's all politics now. And and the problem with the problem with that is politics is all backstabbing fucking bullshit. And to have general officers. To have general officers that have that uh, that goal in mind is it's a terrible combination, and it's the reason why you have uh, you have naval ships right now that twelve year old kids in their basement are starting up the propellers <laughs> on those ships because they can hack into systems that those general officers were saying this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. We should be we, we're gonna it'll be unhackable. Bluetooth controls. Yeah, that's their big. You know, I don't know if you've seen it, but they're like, uh, you know, talking about all the all, <coughs> all the DARPA projects that they have where they're talking about all these autonomous vehicles and shit. And I watched a video last night where they're flying a Black Hawk around with an iPad <coughs> and uh, flying a Black Hawk around with an iPad, picking up a load and moving it around. And they just give it to the reporter and they're like, here, just do what you got to do on here. Anybody can fly this. It's cool. Sounds like it's cool. Everyone in the world is working on everyone in the world is working on how to hack those systems. And so you could have the best you you know, the F twenty two Raptor can be the best aircraft in the world. But if a twelve year old in his basement can log onto it and make it fly where he wants to fly it, that technology is fucking useless. It's fucking useless. It sounds cool. Well Sean Sean Ryan had the hacker kit on, right? That was yeah. going after the pedos, but some of the things that he had said was he had a something in his house that well, like a fucking vacuum cleaner or something right and when he got into the system it had actually logged all his wi-fi shit and recorded everything that had happened within his home from this china made yes. device so i mean if they're doing that i mean you're yeah. only you're only as good as the fucking the last guy you're only as good as the last guy but then you know if all your technology if all your technology is based off of a computer chip then it only takes the difference is for example if you have well um, i don't want to say the f18 but if you have analog systems so if you have 10 analog systems the as far as the military is concerned the pilot is the problem right because mm-hmm. the pilot needs to eat he needs to sleep he needs to shit he needs to do those things that not pass out energies yeah the, the pilot is the problem when you have analog systems so you push more to uh you push more to autonomous vehicles okay well here's the thing if i the 12 year old in my basement eating a pbj and sandwich um can get into your if i if i can't do anything to these analog systems there's nothing i can do to them not at all. It's why all the if, if this, why all the nuclear facilities yeah. none of, they weren't attached to anything. If this pilot if this pilot has to take a shit, I still have four planes that can fly. Now, if you have, I don't know, if you have twenty two F twenty two Raptors that are that are all being controlled remotely, that twelve year old kid can shut down those twenty two F twenty two Raptors, all of them with the push of a button. There's no, there's no fixing it. It's just like, that's the big thing they're talking about. The damn ships in San Diego, like a little kid, really turned the fucking yeah who, engine on. What was that? They they had a whole fucking ship catch on fire, and, and yeah. what was that? Oh, that was they're blaming it. They're blaming it on a sailor, but it's interesting that they're blame they're actually blaming it on the on a sailor, but a couple weeks before our ship caught on fire. The Japanese aircraft, or not the Japanese, the Chinese aircraft carrier that they were working on caught on fire. So it might have been tit for tat. I don't know. They are blaming it on a sailor. But again, it uh, we pretend, at, like the federal government pretends that they're the smartest people on the planet. And when it comes to technology, they're not. They don't, they don't, there's nobody in the federal government that is smarter than a, a current 12-year-old who's on an iPhone all day 
doing. That's what I tell guys all yeah, the time. You're not smarter. Like, I can't get this. I go, you need a ten year old. Yeah, you're you're not smarter. The government's not smarter. And and there are kids out there that are again eat in their in their basements eating their PBJs with, with the crust cut off. Um, who that's all they do. All they do every single day is look for a crack. And the problem with the government is that's all the government makes is cracks. <laughs> they just make cracks. They, they, as a matter of fact, I am sure that that kid that turned the motor on, uh, that turned the props on on that ship was like, let me see if I can get it. Can is that a you. door? Is, is that a, is that an open door that says this is how you turn the motor on? I, I guarantee you it was that simple. It was that fucking simple because we, we're, the a federal government is terrible, terrible at systems. You think he knew what he was doing? Yeah, go, I mean, because what they do... The, he, he, didn't, he wasn't just in the back end of the internet and there's a lever that says on, off, and he just flicked it? No, or, no, no. He knew what he was doing because what, what happens, you know, with those kids, those kids are same thing like with the Roomba, right? They're always looking for a... They're always... They're just like, they'll go, all right, the U.S., you know, the USS Reagan or whatever. The USS Reagan, they're going to they're gonna find a way to link to the system. Okay, so they'll find an opening in the system, and maybe something stupid like, you know, just the USS Reagan Wi-Fi. That's for what I was all. Say, can't they just turn the Wi-Fi routers off for all sailors? You know, can't the Wi-Fi just... for all for the sailors, and the password's going to be something like password, so all the sailors can get on it. Once he's on there, then he's going to find a system that it's linked to, and it may be something stupid like I don't know the. The Bunsen burner in the gallery. This is how you turn the, the chefs. All they have to do is push this button and the fucking thing turns on. But it's also connected to, an, you know, they just, and that's what he's doing. I, I am sure that that kid wasn't like, when he started fucking around on the ship, like when he got on the ship, I'm sure he wasn't, I'm going to start the engine. I'm sure what he was doing was, let's see how far I can go and what I can do. I'll bet he turned on a bunch of systems. Like he turned a bunch of shit on and they were like, Tink, tink, tink. Um, the radar's on. Oh, just turn it off. Boop. I bet he turned a bunch of shit on. Like, you know, the fucking lights were flickering. I bet he did a bunch of shit. The prop turning is a big deal when you're moored. So I bet he did a bunch of shit before he got to that point. And that was the, th that was the thing that they went. Um, there's probably a 12 year old in his basement eating the crust cut off his PP and J who is now in control of the ship. Cause it's definitely not us. Do you think a dude in a suit knocked on mom's door? Or do you oh think yeah. They sent an yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they sent an NRAP. I'm sure they, I'm sure that there's a helicopters involved, a bunch of dudes in tack vests. You really think so? Oh, okay. guaranteed they did. What that's happened? how they justify the. That's how they justify the expense. What happened to the, um, the kid that leaked all the documentation a few months ago? I don't know. Just kind of disappeared. Mm-hmm. How about that Air Force hit, man? Which, oh, the Air Force, I don't know about out the of, Air Force. Wasn't it out of Nashville? I don't know. There's an Air National oh, Guard. Oh, yeah, who dude. was trying to be a hitman? Yeah. 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 A, lot of, a lot of stuff happened with the Air National Guard. How about the uh, the illegal immigrant white supremacist Nazi flag U-Haul driving guy who attacked the White House? Interesting. Interesting how when uh, Washington, D.C. found out he was an illegal immigrant, you know what they did? They dropped the charges against him. So that's, that's weird. Mainstream media put photos out, and he looked like a white guy with very vibrant blue eyes. Yeah. Immediately, within a few hours, there was stuff all over social media going, "Here's his actual picture," and he doesn't look anything like what mainstream put out. Right? You know, they had photoshopped that all together. So somebody did point out, though, somebody on live feed. I'm like, it was like he couldn't drive the truck. He cruised up at about a mile an hour. It's stuttering. But those trucks are all automatics, right? It's not that yeah. it's not that he can't operate a clutch. And somebody said, "Well, surely they have those pulse things that fry the ignition, which is which probably explains the rate of speed which he Maybe. did approach." And then they also said, "White supremacist plan to uh, kill or kidnap the president or the vice president." Was the president and the vice president presently there? And it's just, it's just absolutely bizarre. You don't hear shit more about it. So they've dropped the charges. Yeah. Well, here's the, the more bizarre part about this. And this is how, this is how, you know, guys, this is all propaganda. This is uh this is Germans. This is Germans dressing up Germans in Polish uniforms and throwing them over the fence and saying, Hey, look, the Poles attacked us. Um, 
They burnt it's, their own building. It's down. bullshit. And the reason and, and this is how you know it's bullshit. I want you to think about this. It was a U Haul truck. First off, this individual was an illegal immigrant. Do you know what kind of documentation you have to rent a U Haul truck? You don't you don't just walk in and get the keys to a U Haul truck, okay? You have all kinds of documentation that you have to do for a U Haul truck. Why? Because of Timothy McVeigh. So there's all kinds of stuff you have to do to get this U-Haul truck. Not Second, that, yeah, you have to have you have to have a fucking credit card or yeah. debit card. Like even when we broke down on the way to the NRA show, we stopped to rent a a vehicle because the excursion had broken, yeah. um, and they wouldn't rent it to us for cash. Second, it's a U-Haul truck. He crashed it into the gate of the White House. Okay, it was a U-Haul truck. You, I, I hope. You guys are getting what I'm putting down here. What did the Secret Service do? They pulled a Nazi flag off out of the truck. They displayed it right behind the truck. Did the did the bomb robot show up? Did they did they clear a mile around the U-Haul truck because of a bomb? Because that's what you put in a U-Haul truck that drives up to the White House, not a Nazi flag. So 100% they knew what was in the truck. <laughs> they knew what was in the truck or what wasn't in the truck. Total fucking scam. Total fucking scam. At no point in time, the only time, uh, the only time that criminals get to leave their hoods and hats on and sunglasses right. is when they're FBI agents. When they're going in the subway. Yeah. Or, or they, those boys were arrested a year before. The year before at a Trump rally, they were also arrested and the police handcuffed them, but didn't take their masks off or their sunglasses off cops. The only time you take a fucking piece of the only time you take evidence out of a vehicle and lay it behind the vehicle so that everybody that's in the perimeter can see it and take a picture of it is when it's bullshit. Photo op. It's a fucking photo op. That whole thing was fucking bullshit. It, it's just it, it's amazing how much they're getting away with. Why? What do you mean? Why are they doing it? Because they're they're what they're doing is they're trying to throw as much shit against the wall to see what's going to stick. They are trying to create that. Uh, what's their move? Well, the move is they have to. The move is they have to alienate and crush the right. That's the move. The move is that's what they're trying to do is alienate and crush the right. So, um, they just keep throwing stuff at the wall, whether it's uh. You know, whether it's charging Trump with all this fucking bullshit that... Is that has, still going on? I mean, I'm sure there's some... I'm sure they got some, you know, collusion thing going on. Even though all of it's been proved... You know, it's funny is everybody wanted to jail Trump. 100% everything that they said about him and Russia, Calusa, uh, Russia collusion was a lie. Yet they still haven't hung any of those trays. Nope, 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 nope. But I guess it's okay because you don't like Trump. You guys... In all of these situations, any of this stuff that's going on, what you need to do is in your head, you not, you need to start saying, if, and I don't care how far left you are, you need to start saying, what if the shoe was on the other foot? Or what if you did it? What, what if would the, they do to you? What if, the, yeah, what, what if it was you? What if, what if it was the right doing this to the left? You wouldn't think it was okay. And, and what you need to be prepared for is, is you are the, the, so the next hundred years is not going to be the left in control of in control of what gets sold at Target. Well, I think it's that's, not going to happen. I think that's what's going on there in their death throes. They're a wounded animal. They're super dangerous right now because they are backed into a corner and wounded, and they know that this is a life and death deal. Right? If they're gonna they're gonna do everything they can because as soon as that flips, somebody's going down for this shit. Maybe, maybe. All right, the the problem is the Democrat. You know when you. The, the Democrats are really good at gaslighting everybody, and the Republicans are terrible at taking them to the mat about yeah. it. Yeah, because, the, you know, the Republicans just want to, you know, again, they're all broke. I mean, the system, the, the people in Congress, I know there's some good people in there, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, but the system is fucking broke. We're allowing a permanent government to run the fucking show. And the permanent government just wants to rob everybody. And that is a serious problem. You got your tinfoil hat with you? Why? I'm going to throw this out there. All right, throw it out there. Okay, the border's coming across. We're bringing in 6 million illegals. Yes. Or whatever the number's up to, right? Yeah. 
all these camps that they've built during Obama administration, all these FEMA camps. And right. I know somebody's like, that's not real. Yeah. Yeah. Look it's, it been, it's actually been real for a long there's time. There's fucking, there's hundreds of them. Mm-hmm. Hundreds of them. Um, look up the guillotines. They bought 18,000 stainless steel guillotines during the Obama. What do you need guillotines? Like, like these aren't like tabletop decorated. These are real functioning lop head off guillotines. Zombies? So... They're going to take, why does the World Health Organization say that the number one threat to the world is U.S. citizens' Second Amendment rights being armed, right? Why do all these outside entities, all these people with money outside of the United States say that the the most important thing is to take away the arms from U.S. citizens? It's because they plan to occupy the United States, right? What are they going to do with all the people that would defend the United States, right? The people that believe in the second amendment, the people that uphold their oath, the people that believe in the constitution, they're going to profile you, which they're doing right now. Right. Mm-hmm. On, yeah. on the FBI's uh, keywords of interest for white supremacy is uh, don't believe me. Look it up. Mm-hmm. Check for yourself. Right. Verify it for yourself. Right. Stuff like that. So they're going to round those people up on the outskirts little by little and start disappearing those folks and put them in those camps or whatever. They're going to need other people. They're going to need people to do the jobs or to vote in their manner. And those are those people that they're letting across the border. Those are your replacements. Okay. There's a couple of, there's a couple of uh, holes in that. First off, contrary to what people believe, there's no country, there's no country in the world greater than America. And what I mean by greater than America. Right. Who's going to come in and enforce it? Who's going to, who's going to, the UN guys, uh, UN helmeted dudes from China or Germany or Yugoslavia are not going to show up and be driving around your local city. They don't have to do that. We have a we have a current government. We have a current government that is leaning more towards uh, Xi Jinping, a communist route, than any other time in history. Um, it is the left. It is the left that is pushing us towards a China-like controlled system. The issue is the people that are actually pulling the strings are not thinking, hey, you know what would be great? If uh, we bow down to China and, uh, you know, succumb to their ways. What they are actually thinking is we, as in the United States, are going to control the entire world. And there are things that we need to do to make that happen. One of them is you have to disarm your population. You have to fucking destroy the Second Amendment because there are things that they are going to do that a freedom loving second amendment uh like if if you live under the constitution of the united states there's nothing about a one world government that sounds good right that's mandates that's all that shit so they're using the china they're using china as the model like china we're using china as the model how they control their citizens for sure but the the big thing is freedom around the world is guaranteed in part because of the United States' Second Amendment. As soon as America is laterally disarmed, right? As who's soon gonna, as, who's gonna disarm? It doesn't matter. Let's okay. just let's just say laterally disarmed. The world as you know it is gonna change and it's gonna change at a rapid rate. Iran, Russia, and China. I want you to remember I said this, and I said this years ago. Iran, Russia, and China. These are countries that are standing in the way of a one world government. China will be on board if we implement certain things. We are dealing with Russia right now. And we will deal with Iran too. Once that happens, the you know, the might of the United States military industrial complex, which is the biggest one in the entire world and no one can the next 7 navies can't fucking touch ours. Um is going to be the world police. And you're going to have some organization in The Hague called the WIF, the WAM, the CDF, the BDD, or whatever, of a bunch of rich people who are going to decide what you can eat, what you can wear, where you can go, how you can do it, 15-minute cities, abortions for everyone, whatever. They're going to decide that shit. The only thing that stops that from happening is an America that is armed. That's it. Because they need, the, the reality is, the world needs the United States. International shipping lanes? Who who protects the international shipping lanes? Is it Israel? Nope. Is it Germany? Nope. Is it China? 
No, it is the fucking United States of America. Free trade in the world only exists because of the U.S. Without the United States out there every day, it's Pirate City, brother. If you think that if you think Somali's you know if you think Somali pirates off the coast of Somalia is a big deal, let the U.S. Navy shrink back to the United States and us not patrol international waters anymore. You will have Chinese pirates, Malaysian pirates, Russian pirates. You'll have pirates everywhere. No fucking goods will get transferred around the world. Won't happen because no one else has no one has no one else in the world has the capability. The Chinese don't have the capability. The Chinese don't. You know when everybody's talking about. Oh, they have the largest Navy in the world. They don't have the lift capability right now to move troops from China to Taiwan. And that is just across the street. We can put an aircraft carrier group any fucking where in the world. Anywhere. In anywhere. The king of England could look out his window tomorrow and there'd be a goddamn carrier group out there. Could he do anything about it? No. Couldn't do anything about it. Why? Because he's got one fucking carrier. We got 11. What, what's he going to do? Hey, you know, I, I'll tell you what he's going to do. He's going to be like, hey, why don't you guys come ashore and drink some beers? You know, I'm just, it, 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 it's crazy when you think about it. So, you know, in the in the one world government, we're the stick. They need us to be the stick because no one else can do it. Like, fucking no one. You see what's going on in Europe. The The, you know, the Russians are... 28,000 shells a day. The All of the European, all of the NATO countries, we can only muster nine. That's not, a, that's not a fair fight. It's just not a fair fight. So if Germany can't help the Ukrainians. Can't or won't? Can't. They don't have the, they don't have the capability, right? They, when, when people are talking about, oh, all these main battle tanks that, that so-and-so sending or so-and-so, it's, it's nickels. It's nothing, you know, uh, even 10 M1 Abrams, like if, if, if they get 10 M1 Abrams, that's nothing on that battlefield. That's nothing. That's not going to change a fucking thing. Won't change nothing. They need a brigade. They need a hundred M1 Abrams and all the support vehicles that come with it. Or they need a hundred MLRSs, not the six that we sent them. We're not, we're not, we're nickel and dime in this fucking Ukraine war. Why? Because we want to bleed the Russians to, we want to bleed the Russians to the point where they are no longer a viable source on the international stage. That's the point. The point is to make Russia join the world federation of whatever the fuck we're going to call it. So, I mean, it's a, it's a fucking mess and our politicians are marching straight towards that door with your, you know, your Bitcoin currency that they want to put on you. All that is, all that has an end goal. All that has an end goal. And the end goal is you will be a fucking serf and you will eat what the king tells you. And you will live where the king tells you. That's all that, that's what the goal is. How do you push back? I mean, I, I think we're, you know, the reality is I think we're pushing back now. I think they over, I think they overstepped their boundaries. We put a lot of, we put a lot of super left we, we, we did a lot of inclusions. We did a lot of including in the, whether people think so or not, we did a lot of including in the late nineties, early two thousands. And so you have all these people that are at higher levels now that were included. And because they live in a, I, I can only assume it's a bubble because they live in a bubble. They think that their ideas are okay and that's why they're doing the things that they're doing and it's fucking them up. Like, you know, Target in the first 10 minutes lost more money than fucking Budweiser did. Why? Because they're targeting children. Now, I guarantee you that the fucking people at the top at Target was like, this is going to be okay. This, it's going to be fine. No one's going to no one's gonna care. They want to they get swimsuits for their boys that tuck their wieners. No, they don't. You're targeting children. Children. That's the difference. And that's why they that's why they suck because mothers of America, mothers of America are real good at being like, okay, I don't care what the neighbors are doing, that's the neighbors' shit. Let the neighbors do that shit. They don't, they're real good at that, but mothers of America are terrible when you have corporate America going. This is exactly what your children should be. This is exactly how your children. They will, they will fucking fuck you up. And that's all that, that's not, 
That's not the right. The right didn't show. Are you telling me? Are you telling me that the only people who show up at Target are on the right? No, that's not what the this, right. What that's, this just did is showed the general population that that other side is not as big as they want you to believe. Yeah, they, that they is have true. Amplified the message, or even created the message and amplified it um, for one percent of one percent. Like it, that that group is so small. Right? Well, they, there's 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 been trans people all through history. Yes, right here. So. Why do we hear it, right? Because you've got dudes dressed as women in little kids' bathrooms where little kids are showing them their wieners, right? Have you ever stumbled into a woman's bathroom by accident? Like Costco, right? Costco, Sam's Club, men's bathroom, woman's bathroom. But sometimes you go to a different Costco and it's not the same. So you walk in there, right? You know what's in a woman's bathroom? Stalls. Do you know what's on the stalls? Doors. Yeah. So how the fuck are these little kids seeing these fucking grown men in dresses how are they seeing their penises if there's a fucking door there? That's a problem. And it's not long ago that if that happened, a man would have drugged that motherfucker out and two other dudes who didn't know him would have stomped him to death in the fucking hallway of the movie theater. You can't do that anymore. I think it's getting close to that. Well, I, I think it is too. I think that the... I think that and, the and so you hear Target, right? Target... We're, we're destroying these. Why are they destroying these iconic companies, right? Coors, Bud Lizer, Ford, because they're not American companies anymore. Well, it's those, it's those beer companies are owned actually by a company in Brazil, right? The people who founded those, the Americans that started that with sweat and blood and built America on food, right? America was built. The History Channel has a great series on food that founded America. But those companies are so far removed. There is nobody from those families still controlling those companies. It is the people who've been through and been programmed by these fucking systems. And now that if even if you listen to Ford, they don't call it an American company. It's not an iconic company. Everything is a global company now. Well, and yeah, like Frisella said, right, you have to have, there's, there's three things. And one of them is the ESG score and there's two others. Yeah. And you have to go along with this because they get all their funding from these mega groups, the World Economic Forum, for instance, who is not a U.S.-based group, right? They don't get funding like you and I do. We actually go out, we build a product, we sell it, we put money into a bank, and then we go and build a relationship with a bank manager and be like, hey, we need some funding. We want to grow the business and get this equipment. That's not how they work. No, I, They have to do that. They don't have any interest. They're so far fucking removed. They don't care if it burns the company down. That's the uh, that's kind of the issue is the the ESG that all these companies are having to take on this ESG and in doing so they have to basically slit their own throats. Yes, in order to in order to get these in the, the crazy part and this it's is like a, a, it's it's just like joining the club you got to you got to be able, you got to dress like a woman to get into Hollywood or you got to sell your soul. The part that I don't understand is it's just for it's just for ESG credits. It's for something that's it, there, it's for something that wholeheartedly is fucking make believe. It's not real. It it doesn't. It's not tangible. And these companies are going, these companies are going headlong into it as if it means something. If Ford, the reality is, if Ford was like, "Fuck you, I'm not doing your ESG bullshit." Here's why they're. Here's why that won't work. Because Ford is no longer a U.S. based company. I get it. So but when you, but when you the European say, Union wants to buy Fords, it has it's trickled down. So so. The company that builds the, like you and I, we're going to start, we're going to build starters and alternators, right? We're going to go back and we're going to wind starters, right? We get a contract with Ford. Ford does business with the European Union and they're like, okay, again, Ford, you've got your ESG score, but where are these parts coming from? They're going to do the leverage from the bigger companies, trickle it down. Again, though, um, example, example I would say is if, and, and I know people are going to be like, oh my God. If Trump was president, yes. Okay, let's say Trump was president, and he said, "European Union, fuck you, fuck you," and your ESG scores. Um, American companies are not going to do that. Whether Ford, you know, whether Ford is run by a conglomerate in Germany or not, okay, there's nothing the European Union can fucking say. They're not. They're not going to suddenly. The European Union is not going to go. Oh well, again, then that means we're not going to import none of your food, or we're not going to import any of your cars. They may say that, but it's no different than when, it's no different when the fucking when Germany went over to when Germany was like, shut all the nuclear reactors down, put up the fucking solar panels and wind turbines. That's how we're going to run our country, and then secretly bought millions and millions of gallons of fuel oil from the Russians. And and what was the big concern? The big concern was 
Germany is not run on fucking uh, renewable energy sources. They're run on fucking fuel oil. Yeah, they lie to everybody. Up their nuclear power plants. So man. yeah, they're spinning. Up, they're spinning up coal plants. So it's just <clears throat> so it, they know they know it's so legacy here in the United States, yeah. right? They know that if Trump got back in, we would turn all these coal plants on. We yeah. would just turn them back on. So trash. So what did they do? They blew them all up. Yeah. They've literally demoed all these coal plants here so that they cannot be brought back online. And then now what's the push now? So they've converted a bunch of these coal plants. They now have nat gas, right? So they're running on natural gas. What did, what did New York just do? Ban natural gas. What California doing? Banning natural gas. What the fuck do you guys think you're going to power your shit off of? Well, see, the thing about New York City and California uh, that is, okay. So California can, California can be woke. California can go, Hey, look at us. We're woke. We're not going to use natural gas anymore. New York City. Hey, we're woke. We're not going to use natural gas anymore. Why? Because they import their fucking electricity. So if if the you know main power lines coming out of Texas and Texas is Texas could be Texas could be running those power plants off of kittens. California would still be like, it's not us. Even though every time they turn the lights off, yeah. you hear a little cat go. Meow. So any of the any of the prepper fiction stuff, and there's there's a lot of it out there. Multiple. Um, there's a there's a book series I'm listening to right now. It's called The Farm Behind the Curve, and there's four of these books. And it's basically some doctors and a group of people got together, bought this property, and then society start, kind of started collapsing. It's set in 20 to 23. It's set mm -hmm. it's so COVID's going on. The Wuhan flu is what they call it, and these people kind of this girl ends up defending herself. Somebody drops a brick off of an interstate overpass, mm. smashes up her Audi, and then a bunch of people are trying to pull her from her vehicle, and she smokes a couple of them. Well, the DA goes after her, makes an example of her. Well, she has cameras in her car, so they've uploaded this stuff, and it's uploading to the cloud. So they take all these SD cards, right, and they the prosecutors alter the footage like um, mm -hmm. happened to uh, Kyle Rittenhouse. So they alter the footage and put it out, and they don't show her being attacked. They only show the footage of her smoking these fucking Antifa people. So luckily they've got... But, but anyways, it's this whole series. And in all of these books, the, um, the power grid, they can turn your power off. Like They, they mm -hmm. will throttle power to all of us to push it to the cities because who votes for them, right? They don't, they don't care what we're doing out here yet. They're going to take care of the cities. But so at the same time, what happens? The EPA and the FDA starts rousting on the farmers and demanding that we turn in our cows and we provide our eggs so that they can feed the cities. And that's, that's really what happens now. I mean, we feed the cities for the fucking power. You know, they throttle it down. And well, that, that's a, the interesting thing about the interesting thing about uh, the, the left side of the Democratic Party is they don't even give a shit about the people who live in the cities. Like, you know, uh, for, for California to come out, for California to come out and be like, Hey guys, um, don't charge your electric vehicles. Cause we're in a power outage. You would think, you would think that they would be like, that they would get on the grid and be like, okay, only give electricity to houses that are charging cars. Only give electricity to the people that are in our camp. You know what I'm saying? Cause we're almost at the point. We're almost at the point where you were because of the digital meters, the smart meters. We have them out of, here yeah, because of the smart meter. We're almost at the point where they could be like they can, uh, Republican, no electricity, yes. Democrat, or vice versa. Well, you're or, starting to see that yeah. now. I mean, you're you're starting to see that with banking and stuff right now. You're seeing that starting to happen, yeah. um, but it's all manipulation. So when when you have like let's say martial law, right? You have local area government. Mm -hmm. um, will get super tyrannical. Anybody with a little power will always grab for more power, more power. and they will sell it to the people as the, uh, well, the people with money, you know, they, they had a, a, the ability for the last few years to stock food away, right? They were hoarding food. Yeah. So we're going to confiscate it. So they sell it to the mass population as though we're going to confiscate this. So they'll go right along with it. There's nobody to stop them. And we're so few that they'll come in in mass and stomp all over you or burn your shit down. Right. So they, take all this shit, but they don't distribute it to those people mm -hmm. that thought they were going to get it. Mm -hmm. It's just so that they can stay comfortable. Mm -hmm. When While your power's out, do you think those government buildings have air conditioning? Fuck yes, they do, right? And they seize. They, they do seizures and uh, asset forfeiture, and they will take the properties that they want for their use. Like, that, that's, I mean, you can, it's happened all over the country. You know, I just did a podcast, a two-part podcast with Sonny.
And we talked to that. A lot of that was what happened in Russia when that mm-hmm. all happened, right? The oligarchs, right? We call them, we call them oligarchs or whatever, but you and I know people that they would be calling oligarchs yeah. right, right now. I mean, those are just people that fucking worked their ass off all their lives, made money, invested their money and just took a different path that people chose who chose not to. Kind of. It's a little different in Russia. Yes. It's a little different in Russia because it would be more like... But um, it's the corruption. Yeah. It would be more like um, what Biden does where he he picks his favorites, right? Mm-hmm. So it doesn't. It kind of doesn't matter if you're... It kind of doesn't matter if you, you, you think about uh, love him, hate him, whatever. Elon Musk, right? He's done more to advance... He's done more to advance... Uh, our space technology than anybody has done in the last 50 years. He's done more to advance our electric car thing than anybody's done in the last 50 years. Uh, you know, whatever. I don't know what he did to Twitter, but the guy has is doing things that are actually advancing civilization. There are more Elon Musk satellites orbiting this planet, which you can say plus or minus, whatever. But there are more... There are more ways to connect to the internet thanks to Elon Musk uh, than ever before. So he's he's doing things that are actually advancing civilization. But he's not uh, one of Joe Biden's guys. Like, yep. literally not invited to the electric yeah. car, uh, you know, the Washington, D.C. electric car thing, right? He wasn't invited because cause they don't like him. Yeah. Now, what the, that means that Joe Biden is setting up oligarchs, right? He's he's picking and choosing who wins and who loses, right? You'll even see, though Elon can basically see, tell them to fuck off. You'll see the governor give the mayor's power, yeah, and the mayor will come to seize your shit, and you're going to say no, and the mayor's going to the local whoever he sent is going to go back, mm-hmm. and now they're going to come back with a SWAT team, yep. and you're going to be outgunned. He's going to use guns against you. While also trying to take away your guns. The crazy thing is, we're we're really at the point where, if you live if you live in society, right? So if you if you live in society, I'm not talking about all you guys that live in caves in the woods with your solar panels, but if you live in society and operate in society, they don't need SWAT teams anymore. Like they they really yeah. they, outside of outside of armed incursion, like a you know I have a flamethrower and you can't take my house down. They don't need SWAT teams anymore. They really, with the touch of a button, they can shut your life off. They can shut your water off. They can shut your lights off. They can shut your uh, your, your account down. They can shut your credit card. They can shut you off to the point where you're going to walk out of your house and be like, fuck it, you can have my gas stove. I'm sorry, I just wanted to cook hot dogs on a gas stove, but you can have that motherfucker. Where's my electric one? Yeah, in certain places in California, you put up solar, you still have to be grid-tied. You still have to. Oh yeah, you have to be Like, they were going around in in San Diego, outskirts of San Diego, and they were filling concrete wells into concrete. They were filling up septic tanks and people's wells with concrete, so they could not use Mm -hmm. them. That is about you not being able to not need them. That's exactly what that's about. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, hundred percent. And if you think if you think you're going to make it through that, you should try that out. Like, take a weekend, turn your power off, and see see how how you fare. Right? See what that looks like. If you think you're going to do that, practice that. I mean, and it, all you guys crying about carrying more than three mags, you're probably not going to fucking make it. You know, see, you, they're going to send CPS to the school to pick yep. up your kids because you're abusing your kids because you don't. That's have That's in this book series. They they I mean, had a bunch gonna, of people. They're going to do a lot. There's there is a lot of ways. For the, the crazy, this they is are the, going to use government against you and criminalize you. The crazy thing about it is, there are so many ways that the government can squeeze you without ever pulling out a gun. I don't understand. I mean, I, I guess it's you know, again, uh, you know, Orange County SWAT team has to justify. What do you think? Seventy five thousand new IRS agents you know, have to have an MRAP, so they're going to use those vehicles. But the reality is, they could. Just normal Joe, by the way, normal Joe, they can squeeze you without, there's so many things that they can do to get you to a point where you're going to be like, fuck it, take my gas stove or fuck it, I'll buy yeah, an electric you had, car. You had whistleblowers testifying before Congress and while he was there speaking to Congress, IRS was harassing his wife at his house. Of course. It's coming to you. Yeah. Wait, just wait. You're, you're not far removed from saying shit on the internet that they don't like. And they're going to be knocking on your door. I mean, we probably already. The, the, here's the crazy part. The crazy part is not 
you're going to say something on the internet. You already have. Like, yeah, they're going to get you. You've already said it. They're they gonna, will change gonna, the law and go back. They're going to go back 10 years, yeah. and they're going to be like, remember that time that you said that Scooby-Doo was a terrible cartoon? Um, you are now under arrest. IRS went after somebody and then immediately went and checked all his friends' accounts without any warrant, right? So this just went to high court. High court ruled that the IRS didn't do anything wrong. So this is now, there's case law for this. Yeah. That when they come after me, they don't have to have a warrant for you. They don't have to have a warrant for him. They can look at his girlfriend shit and just piece it together. I'm just going to, I am just going to assume that the days, the days of the constitution protecting you from uh, incursions by law enforcement are over. Yes. There's, it, it, and it's not, and they're not even goddamn law enforcement anymore. Cause right? they don't have to, when we say law enforcement, we meant the police and the sheriff. Yeah. Now it's the IRS, it's the FDA, it's the EPA, it's a, some it's a three letter agencies you've never even fucking heard of. Because they could, because you know the reality is all they have to do is be like, um, you know, oh we're gonna get a warrant, we're gonna get a warrant to go to such and such location because they are hiding children in their basement, right? And then they come to your house and you don't even have a basement. You don't have a basement, and they're like, is that a gas stove? Oh. By the way, you're under arrest for using a gas stove. They, so even if my, my, you know, I hate to say it, uh, but even if they need to get a warrant, they, they don't have to prove anything anymore. Like they don't, it used to be you would have to go in front of the judge and be like, here is a picture of Brandel with two kilos of cocaine on his head as he's coming across the border into the United States. Right, they used to have to prove shit. They used to have to put something in front of the judge that would make the judge go, "All right, you can have a warrant." Now they don't have to do shit. I mean, no. they don't really have to prove and, anything. And if they come in and don't find it, they'll just plant it. Yeah, they'll and they, just put it there. Hey, most people don't know. Most people don't know this, but after nine eleven, yep, uh, law enforcement can now do what they call sneak and peeks, meaning if they suspect you of a crime. They no longer have to get a warrant to go in your domicile while you are not there and look around and see what they can find. And accidentally leave something. There. Maybe. Well, there's tons of video of it. Maybe. Maybe accidentally there's, there's leave fucking, something. There. That's what I'm just saying. It's They don't realize how many cameras are everywhere. People people literally have hidden cameras. Like I I think every vehicle you drive should have fucking front and rear facing cameras. You don't even have to make them evident. You just need to fucking have them to fucking protect yourself. Makes the greatest videos coming out of Russia. Those autom those automobile cameras that they have. Oh, you could spend days looking at all the traffic shenanigans. <laughs> I love when people pull AKs out. It's awesome. All right, so anyways, how many mags should a loadout carry? Uh, are we going? Are we are we fighting the Chinese? Homeland. That's another thing people have problem with. Every time I say defending the mother, they're like, who do you think is going to invade you? Who do you care what, I, what anyone thinks? Who gives a shit what if, somebody it's thinks? Just, it's just type of, it's just type of yeah. war you're doing. I think everybody should have an armor carrier with six mags, it's just three mags, whatever you want. And you should buy a rally man vest or a patrol vest. It's, uh, it carries a lot should, more equipment. I think you should get the dangler, really. With the dangler. With the dangler. The dangler. Because you can put more shit in the With dangler. With the dangler. All right, guys. Um, we have an Amazon link. Uh, it's on any of the YouTube videos. If you just clip that link while you're using Amazon, it takes you straight to Amazon, and it takes a couple percentage points away from Amazon, and it gives it to us. Use that if you would, if you do use Amazon. Um, EMP Shield. Everybody's worried about the power going out from solar flare or whatever. EMP Shield. If you use code SOE, it gives you fifty dollars off your order. They have very cool. Uh, they're they're very. It's not some bullshit wires. It's a nice unit, and they do them for motorcycles and side by side. Is he coming vehicles. to the event? Yeah. Oh, they've been to the event every. But I mean, is he coming? This oh year? yes, absolutely. Okay. We can get them over and have them install something in your place. Well, I was thinking I'd just drive dr the Unimog. Drive the Unimog over here and have them put it on the Unimog. That'd be right? awesome. So um, it gets you $50 off code SOE. Um, benchmark signs and gifts. Check them out. I have an affiliate code for them too, but I don't know what it is. They do awesome work if you want any uh, signs or anything made. Um, our guy over at Radio Made Easy, if you want some communications gear, check out Radio Made Easy. He will program it to your needs you can communicate with him tell him what you want to do what you think you want to do and if you don't know he'll tell you what your options are 
and he will send you radios that work right out of the box. How many guys have radios right now that they bought these things and they've never turned them on, right? He will provide that as well as all of the information in a two-day class or a modified class if you wish. Self-reliance. What is he going to be here for the of course. self-reliance? He, well, before that, on June 17th, we're having a chainsaw workshop here. It's $100. It's on the website. Um, Chris Watkins is coming out here. Um, Am I going to have to climb the fence again? Master Arborist now. To get in? Master Arborist. We're going to have all kinds of equipment. All kinds of brands are going to be out here. We've got vendors coming out with equipment. Um, you're going to know everything about chainsaws, why you need a chainsaw, what size chainsaw, how many chainsaws, what this one does, what this one doesn't do. Um, do you want an electric saw? What's the difference? What will the electric not do? Why would I even want an electric versus a gas saw? Um, how to use large wood chippers. A lot of guys doing homesteading know that wood chips make soil and, and add life um, because of the microbes and everything. So you're like, well, I'm going to cut these trees down and we're going to chip them. You're going to be sadly, you're going to be very sad at the end of the day. Jeff and I spent <laughs> a week with paying, paying five guys full time, dragging brush and debris with a giant ass wood chipper. And at the end of the day, we had like one pile. It, it, it takes a ton. Oh. You will have a new appreciation or the work that these guys do. But we're going to have all this here, hands-on. You're going to see how to use it. Tell them the secret. What is the secret? You know the secret. Get with your local municipality. Get with your local arborist or your local municipality because they're dumping those things in the trash anyways. Yep. And, you know. You got to bribe a guy. Maybe. I wasn't going to use the word bribe, but maybe you can slide somebody something that make them drop those wood chips off at your place. Yeah, find the guys on the ground that are doing the work. And just be like, hey, man, I really need some wood chips. I appreciate what you do. Here's 100 bucks. Buy you and your boy some lunch. And then just become friends with them. Because that's, that's where you're really <clears throat> going to get the, the wood chips. Yeah, that you it's, need. it's a ton of work. Anyways, we're going to have all that out here. And then what do you do with the trees that you cut down? What are your options, right? Can we turn them into dimensional lumber via a sawmill that we'll have out here? Or do you want to turn it into firewood, right? What's the best way to make firewood? Do you want to use a sledgehammer in a mall? What do I get for, you know, a $200 wood splitter? What do I get for a $1,000 wood splitter? Why in the world would I spend $7,500 for this firewood processor? It's all going to be here. You're going to see it. You're going to see it in action. Come on out. Uh, we're going to have camping uh, Friday, the night before. Uh, the class will start. So will you be camping? Will I be camping? Yeah. No. 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 I don't have to camp. Nobody has to camp. But it'll save you the hotel. And a lot of these guys have cool overland rigs and stuff. Yeah. So compound will be open, available to you. We're going to feed you. We're going to have a couple options for lunch, meat, meat options. Uh, you can bring, bring a bag lunch. We've got other options local here where you can go and eat if you'd rather have something else for lunch. Um, 100 bucks. It's on the website at SOE Tactical Gear. And uh, got anything else? Can I, it, can I jump the fence anyways? Yes. Even though Because it makes me feel like I'm doing something dangerous. Do you want me to have somebody push the fence down a little? No, so no, little I can, I can get over this one over here. I can do it. I did it last time. Don't they have those things you stick through the chain link and you can just climb them? Yeah, but you got to carry them with you, and it's kind of a pain in the ass. What if you got a really big ladder so you just step up and step down? That'd be kind of cool. But then I have to carry it through the woods. Yes, you would. I'm carry it through the woods. So yes, you would. Um, but you're gonna hey, have the Unimog here. I will have the Unimog. Oh, I could. You no. have a chainsaw for the Unimog? Yes. Bring it. Okay, it's in the Unimog. Okay. <laughs> it's part of the SL3 for the Unimog. Um, don't forget High Point Firearms, the champagne of firearms. And uh, that's all I got. We do a shirt at SOE every Monday. We put a shirt out. It's a new one every week, and uh, they're available. We have a text app at, on the website. Typically, stuff sells out at the text. Text usually goes out a little before email. We send a text out every day. So if you're going to be like, oh, my God, they send me a lot of text. Yeah, uh, yeah, guys want to buy the stuff we have. If you don't want as many texts, get on the email list. We send one out on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, usually the cool shit sold out before the email goes out. That's true. Usually. Leave them with some hope. It's not as bad as I said it was. Grow food. Yeah. Learn just learn learn to do learn to do something independent. I know everybody wants the freedom, but you guys have way too much freedom as it is to do things. Uh learn to do learn to do something that makes you independent of everybody else. And the more money you have the less you worry what the fuck they're doing. That's that's true. Like the more money, would you, whatever you're doing while you're listening to this right now, would you be doing it if you had millions of dollars? If like, if you just, every morning you looked at your bank account and there was more money in your bank account because you had so much money, it's making money. Would you be doing what you're doing right now? Hmm. What if it's what I'm doing right now that's putting the millions of dollars in my bank account? 
Yeah, that's few and far between. Mo- well, most of our listeners, that probably is the case. Okay. All right. Just checking. All right. All right. 